I'm Sam with Money Bros and today we'll be looking at some of the current finance news going on right now. Logan Paul is under some new fire as the US Senate leader has asked the FDA to look a little deeper into Prime. They have concerns about the high caffeine content in the energy drinks and there have been many calls for regulation on these drinks. The FDA is currently reviewing the request by US Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and they're making sure to look at Prime's marketing and their caffeine content. Prime has 200 milligrams of caffeine in 315 milliliters of liquid. Liquid. As a reference point, Coke has 34 milligrams of caffeine in a 335 milliliter can. To get the same amount of caffeine from Coke as Prime, you need to drink about six cans. Many people are worried about the health risks associated with excessive caffeine consumption, especially for children. Due to an overconsumption of caffeine, people have had headaches, shaking, stomach issues, and negative impacts on mental health. Many people are calling for regulation for minors, so no one under 18 would be able to buy these drinks. Countries like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have banned Prime because of how much caffeine it has. This has huge potential financial consequences for the energy drink companies due to regulatory changes. Other brands such as Kim Aid by Kim Kardashian and Ghost Energy are also under fire because of their high caffeine percentage. Now this is a problem because many of Logan Paul's viewers are children. Their marketing strategies are targeted toward minors and this has been causing confusion among retailers. In one article I read, a mom recounted seeing a bright colorful bottle of a drink that her kids had been asking for so without realizing it was an energy drink she bought it for her kids until her older son pointed it out to her next up we have intel's 1.2 billion dollar investment in costa rica intel recently announced that they will be investing 1.2 billions with b into costa rica in, in the span of the next two years this is going to be really big for costa rica's economy because they are a fairly small economy and this will be a big inflow of cash this will provide lots of jobs and opportunities for many of the citizens there. About a year ago in early August, they signed the 2022 Chips and Science Act. This provides $280 billion in funding to improve the US's semiconductor market, reducing the state's needs on China's semiconductor market. Because the US is partnering with Costa Rica to encourage companies to do stuff like this, this will give Americans better access to semiconductors, hopefully lowering the prices of computer components. Next up, we have Dan Ives, a analyst, thinks Apple might try to acquire ESPN from Disney in the near future. We know that Apple is, wants a strong presence in the live sports content because of their 2.5 billion deal with the Major League Soccer exclusive streaming deal. So now the Pro Soccer League can only be watched on Apple TV for the next 10 years and that is what the 2.5 billion was for. Analyst Dan Ives view uh, is that acquiring ESPN is, would be a no-brainer. Apple's interest clearly has was shown by their big acquisition so it would make Make sense for them to look into ESPN as this would as this would give them exclusive rights to many more sports industries. It's estimated a this financial commitment would be around 50 billion dollars for the acquisition, which even though Apple's a big company, would be no small feat for them. And this would be a little bit of a deviation from Apple's cautious acquisition of companies. I believe it was 2012 when they acquired Beats, and that was their last big acquisition. This could put their cash reserves at an all-time low and change their financial strategy. This would fit well with Apple's business strategy incorporating even more live sports content into their ecosystem as you would be able to access any most of the big sports from any Apple product most of the big sports live streams from any Apple product this would align with Apple's big goal of providing a very comprehensive entertainment hub this would keep users even more a part of the ecosystem than they already are this would bring more people through advertising and would bring a lot of subscriptions and even more partnerships in next up we have Visa and MasterCard fee increases. Visa and MasterCard announced that they will be increasing merchant fees on customer use of cards. Visa and MasterCard have a fee for merchants when people use cards like tap hate or swiping, like a transaction fee. This fee is scheduled to increase in October and April to the respective companies. So these fees are paid by merchants such as Walmart, Amazon, to the card issuing banks and they are incurred every single time a customer swipes their card. So this would be extra big for online retailers such as Amazon. It will be interesting to see what kind of impact this has on merchants, especially online. What will probably happen is that to bypass the increased fee, that the merchants will pass the fee on to customers by increasing prices. Thank you so much for watching. If you found anything in this video useful or, and want to support us, our Patreon is down in the description below. If you have any questions, comments, or insight, go ahead and put them in the comments below. If you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe for more updates.